Hey guys, this is Danny with Home CNC, and I'm here to talk about. I'm basically giving you a little tour of our uh, of our ATC system, giving you the ins and outs of exactly how we test it, the exact components inside of it. I'm um, trying to make it a little easier for you to understand, so that you can whenever you go to install your ATC, um, you've got all the answers you need along with our uh, knowledge base, um, which is online. Uh, yeah, stick with me, and we'll dig into it. Mm. I wanted to put together a little video to show you how we stress test our uh, PEs, our pneumatics enclosures, for our ATC system. Essentially, we've got a our VFD right here. It's hooked up. We've got the run safety wire over here, which lets the PE know whenever the VFD is running or not. We've got the uh, five-pin control cable wired up to our, uh, our NASO controller up here, along with the VFD. It's all controllable. You can hit the uh, CW and... If I was on automatic, there it goes. Um, or <laughs> I had the wrong switch on there. Um, on automatic, you can see that whenever I hit the CW or stop button, it changes from blinking to solid. What's harder to see on the camera is there's a little FWD light right here, which says forward. If I were to hit the spindle CCW, it would still say it would still be solid, but the FWD would basically be unlit indicating that this is in reverse mode now, so we're going to go in the opposite direction. And hit stop there. One other notation I'll point out is here's our MTC button for our pneumatics enclosure. And as you can see, it's lit up because our VFD is blinking. If I hit the CW button, it will turn not blinking, which means the button is no longer active, meaning we can't drop a tool out. But the instant we hit stop, and it's going back to blinking, and it lights up, we can hit the button. Now remember the, uh, or I guess not remember, know that this is a, uh, an air solenoid system, so it's not immediate electronic style responses that we're all used to. Whenever you push this button, hold it down. Allow that air to flow through and it'll help clear out any dust or whatnot that's on the cone or in the uh, internal cone of the motor. So hold that down. Put it up there and then let it go. When the air um, finishes draining out and clearing all that dust, it will then suck it all up and it will be ready to go. I also want to point out, if you go into the setup section and we'll see our, I've got, I've got my ATC wired up to input seven and eight. That's tool changer one for seven, tool changer two for eight. Now, tool changer one and input seven in this case is my draw bar. That's the thing that's actually grabbing onto this piece right here. Clamps down, it's spring activated so it'll always stay closed even with no air pressure. So whenever you give it air pressure, it opens up the jaws, releasing the tool, and then closes back down. Now, the tool changer, you'll see here, it's low, and I've got both of these inverted. That's the way it's supposed to be. Um, it's because of the NPN uh, proximity sensors that are inside of the motor to determine the state of the motor, um, we need to invert those. So we're going to invert those so that whenever it's, uh, whenever it's not doing the tool change, input 7 should be low. And if there is a tool in the motor, input 8 or tool changer 2 should be high. Now if I push this button, Hold the button down, you'll see that tool changer input 7, tool changer 1 is high. And when I let go of the button, it will return to low. That's basically the state of the drawbar. The tool changer 2, you'll notice on input 8 here, is low now because I've removed the tool. If I uh, put the tool back in there, its steady state will be high. Is that the, that's the expectation of the Maso controller. So that's a quick little test. Um, you don't even have to have any of the, uh, the, the five pin control cable um, hooked up to the PE in order to test the, the MTC. The reason for that is some machines don't support ATC functionality. Therefore, those inputs and outputs, as far as uh, triggering the solenoids or receiving the inputs from the motor are irrelevant, like on the uh, Shapoko 5 Pro where the Warthog controller can't understand them. What you can do there is just leave 
the MTC button or the, the five pin control cable for the ATC, leave that disconnected and because there's no place to connect it up on the Warthog um, or some other machines. But you can use the ATC in full automatic mode or I'm sorry, full manual tool changing mode. So you can just change your tool and treat it like a regular spindle and just use this button to make the tool changes. Um, an interesting um, feature, I don't know how interesting it is, but this is our, this is our mechanical method of changing, manual mechanical method of changing the uh, tool. Inside of the Maso controller, there is a software method of doing it. If you pull up the MDI screen, you'll see a set spindle clamp off. It is currently in the off state. And if I were to hold that for three seconds, one, two, three, it will activate the solenoid in the PE if you've got a control cable. Push it once and it'll turn it off. Hold it again. Put the tool in there. Push the button. So even if your MTC is not working for whatever reason, you can still control your uh, manual tool changing from the screen here. And this is covered in another video, but you'll notice that I've got 10 tools uh, from front to back here on the left side. All of those are defined in the tools section. So all of these guys right up here. The tool number is right there. So those can be linked to whichever, whichever bit you've got in there. Um, the slot number can be adjusted any way you need to. Um, I just go one, two, three, four, five, and, and one, one, two, two, three, three, and just keep on going with it. But if you end up changing your tools to different positions or something like that, you can adjust where the tools are sitting which tool number is sitting in which slot. That way you can have your programs all written to a specific tool number, but then you can change the tools if you want to. Like if you have um, um, one carve that you do regularly that uses three specific bits, put those in the first three. And then if you change to a different type of, uh, a different design that uses like three other bits, um, you can take those bits out, put the new bits in and just adjust the, uh, the slot number for that bit and it'll automatically take care of it for you. Now, an important note is whenever you're doing any manual tool changing, keep track of which tool the controller thinks it's got. Right now it thinks it's got number two and that's the second slot here. If I were to change um, this to the number one and I tried to run a program, it may, jam it may uh, crash in, my bit may crash into a tool that's sitting in, my, in the spot. So basically, make sure whatever physically is happening is confirmed right here on the screen, right here at the top, right here on the program screen. So tool number two, I've got tool number two in the system. So I've written this little program. I'm going to hit rewind. We're going to hit play. And it takes a second for it to start. But it will basically drop off tool number two and pick up the next bit. Now, it will repeat this process multiple times, but I do want to point out a couple of things. So let me let me zoom in. As it's running this test, let me zoom in on the We factory set these pneumatics enclosures with specific settings. Now, we have a, a tool, dust, and auxiliary, or additional. Um, additional, most people like to use that for a um, the air assist on a diode laser or something like that. On the tool, this is the main drawbar clamp. This is the one that actually pulls the drawbar in and out. This takes up 95 PSI, or roughly 90 PSI. So about 0.6, uh, what is this, megapascals? Just, a, just above that, that's fine. The dust port is what actually, is what you hear coming out of the mode. The tool is pressurized, so it won't, it doesn't, the air doesn't escape from that. What's this, the air that is escaping from the motor is actually coming from the dust port. And that's blowing out all the, the cone, blowing out the dust from the motor, if there's any, making sure that it's nice and clean. And especially whenever it comes down to grab the new cone, it's blowing off, the, it's blowing off any dust that might be sitting on the, on, the, on the cones that are in the tools. And for, for the dust port, you want that to be roughly 0.2 megapascals or roughly 30, 30 PSI. 
Now we do have um, additional uh, tubing and that sort of thing available. So if you need to run this additional port for an air assist or something, reach out to us. Uh, we'll point you in the right direction. Now what we'll point out, there are multiple ways to store your tools. This is definitely one of the simplest ways to store the tools. Um, we've also got forks available, which basically the motor comes down, drops the tool off, comes up, goes, grabs another one, picks up the new tool, slides it out, and then goes and does its job. This one is just coming to a position, dropping down, grabbing it or letting it go, and then picking the next one up. Um, in this case, you'll notice this is exactly how this uh, method should work. It should go over to the position, X, Y position of that, of that tool, go down to the Z position that is configured in the controller, drop off the tool, come up, go over to the next X, Y position, go down. Now this does mean that all of the tools in this simple method need to be at the same Z height. But this, uh, this tool change is gonna run for probably another 20 or 30 tools. Because, um, again, we're stress testing the PE, but here I'll get you a uh, close-up of the wiring, of the tubing and wiring on the PE so that you can see what that looks like. All right, over here we've got our motor sensors. This runs through the cable chain to the motor and it joins the, uh, the spindle cable from the VFD on the other side there. This guy is our manual tool changing button. That's this guy right here. This one down here is our run safety cable. That one runs all the way over here to our VFD. The last cable is our uh, control cable. Five pin ATC control cable basically runs up here to the Maso controller and plugs in. Here, let me show you. I'll show you a zoom in of that, just to be safe. So I've got a shorter cable than what you'll probably receive, but I've got the, uh, here's input seven and input eight. This is the drawbar sensor, and this is the tool presence sensor. Both of them are jumpered over to power because these are NPN sensors, which require power, so it draws up. When the sensor is triggered, it pulls it down to ground, so that's why you got to invert it whenever the sensor is triggered. Down here towards the bottom, I've got three more sensors now. This one's kind of a hack that I did. Um, your cable will actually have this diode <laughs> Just a minute. There it goes. So it'll have this diode built into this wire with heat shrink and all that so it'll so it'll be it'll look a lot cleaner than this. But basically this is the um MTC wire. Whenever the button is pushed, there's power that comes back through this, it goes into the controller. We don't want that. That's the purpose for the diode. It prevents that voltage from hitting the controller and doing anything weird there. The um the other wire here is the uh auxiliary or the additional port. So these are the outputs. I've got them wired up to output seven and eight. And of course the last one is our ground cable so that it ties in with all the other grounds that are there. And all that runs back behind the controller to, actually, you know, this is it right here. I've got the ATC plug coming in here to the back into one of our inlet panels. Um, we've got a cover there, and I've got a little spot here where I can put an MPG if I need to. But these are the additional wires and cables that are from the from the from this machine. Now, up here, let's see. I'll show you one last thing, and then we'll, then we'll wrap it up. So I've got the chiller down there. That's all plugged in. Um, I've got this ATC. This is just a simple 110 ATC, and it's got the uh, uh, the the cool connectors. It comes default with those. And of course, here's my cables. So this port right here um, is our dust port. It splits into two because there's actually two different spots where we need to add dust. And of course, right here in the middle is our draw bar. That's where it pushes down this clamp, which opens. That's where it, there's a clamp inside here in this black section. And it opens up a clamp and pushes down, basically pushes down a clamp that opens up the draw bar. And then it draw, uh, sucks it back up. So that's what it looks like in there. In this midsection here, this little silver band right here, we've got a couple of proximity sensors. These are very similar to the sensors that you'll find on your machine. Um, not, not this optical style, but a different style. Um, the barrel uh, style. <laughs> a couple, they're really small, but they're in there. And that's what the wires that are coming out. Let's see, 
right here are. We've got a GX1216 connector on them um, so that we can send power and um, all their wires, basically their two wires come right out here and power and uh, the sensor cables and that sort of thing. That's what's mounted up right there. And I've been using my machine so long with so many tests, like hundreds of tests for these ATC machines that my wires are kind of getting frayed, frayed here. I need to fix those. Um, then lastly, we've got our uh, our, AT, our our spindle cable right here. I've actually got the six foot extension. So this cable um, goes down through the drag chain and then meets right here where I can disconnect it. This way I can take my entire gantry off, disconnect all the wires right here, and then store this in the truck, and then move the bed and the legs into the truck so I can come over to uh, when I came into uh, Workbench Con um, last year. Yeah, last year or the year before, I forget. But um, those are all the cables. I've got it hooked up to a dust boom. This is our, uh, this is our very first dust boom prototype here. Um, but I still use it. I love it. I'm using the uh, three quarter, or I think it's three quarter inch, and maybe the one inch um, e EMT tubing that's real cheap at, at Home Depot. Um, but I've just got it hooked up. I've just got it taped right there at the bottom. That way it runs freely around. No problems there. I can run my dust hose uh, whenever I'm running carbs. Run that over here to my little uh, spindle clamp right here. I've got it detached for now. Um, I think I have it on a different machine. But I'll set it here and then I can mount my dust boot right onto there and have cl full clearance and everything. I usually run my tubes, my, and my, uh, yeah, all of my tubes, uh, air tubes and the, uh, coolant tubes right through here, right through the back and let that flow freely with the, uh, spindle cable. The motor sensor and the spindle cable, unfortunately, these machines don't have a large enough cable chain. Um, so they only support what their stuff and I was able to squeeze in the motor sensor and the uh, spindle cable into this chain um, otherwise the tubes have to go run separately now it's kind of a mess here but that is my setup <clears throat> oh one last thing this is the VFD um, you'll notice here on the left we've got the six pin control cable which goes over to the controller we've got the run sensor cable I talked about earlier We've got the manual override cable. Um, both of these are in here, but they could be relocated to beside the controller if you wish. On this side, um, I've got the actual power cable um, and a uh, our spindle cable coming in here. Um, I'm constantly unplugging it and plugging it in because I've got a 220 down there so that I can swap between the two and run uh, all kinds of tests. And that's actually our very first PE, <laughs> fun fact. Um, let's see, our last port here is our braking resistor, and that allows you to uh, configure a couple of settings in the VFD, which allows you to slow down the spindle a little faster than, than normal. Hope that made sense to you. Hopefully clearing all the components and that sort of thing up. If you've got our ATC, we have got you back. Reach out to us at support and we are absolutely happy to help. Um, but yeah, we really like this system and know that it's, it's a great system that will work through thousands of tool changes. Don't just own your CNC, dominate it.